Incredibly strange as the mythology and history of this fruit is, the way that it grows might just be the most intriguing thing about it. Let's follow the process from seed to tree. The coco de mer, as I mentioned, is the largest and heaviest nut in the world, weighing as much as 40 pounds. So the first step is that one of those fruits would fall on the ground with a giant thud. You can even see like how far apart they are. So like a, one of the fruits fell. Yeah, I heard that too. You see that big cluster there? I can't even count them all. So it's kind of like terrifying a little bit walking around because if one of those falls on you, you're in trouble. And we were actually like walking around and we heard like a big thud. So I'm guessing, um, <laughs> you know, it does happen. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, it's, uh, it's curtains for you. The parent tree has an incredible role in the survival of its children. The leaves of the coco de mer, which can grow to 30 feet long, serve several functions. They collect fertilizer by way of animal poop and dead plant material. So when rain hits these leaves, the debris is then funneled down onto the fallen fruit, providing water as well as the nutrients that it needs to grow. The leaves also block out the sun, which removes some of the competition of other plants that might be growing and taking nutrients away from the coco de mer. In nature, plants can spread their seeds in a variety of ways. They may be dispersed by the wind, by water, or may be spread by animals that will eat the fruit and then poop out the seed somewhere else. Well, with the coco de mer, we are faced with a puzzle. These fruits are so heavy that when the fruit falls, it doesn't get very far from the parent tree. There are no animals big enough to spread these seeds, and although the shells have historically shown up on the shores of many countries, those shells are the hollowed out nuts that have already germinated. A viable seed is far too heavy to be spread by water. Those seeds would just sink. How the coco de mer spreads is that when the seed germinates, a sharp shoot will exit the shell and plunge down into the earth. This shoot goes a distance of several feet before popping out of the ground and forming a new tree. That gives the plant ample space so that it's not competing for nutrients with the parent tree or with other seedlings. One of the more mysterious things about the coco de mer, you can see how these trees are actually growing uphill. You look on the hill, you see coco de mer trees was growing. When you realize how they can go up the hill. When the nut germinated, they germinated about a meter away from the nut. They fell all surrounding the trees. Mm -hmm. The one that they fell down, they produce another trees. Right. And the trees make the same cycle. Every tree, female trees that they grow, they make a cycle. In 25 years, another trees grow this. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing to produce the fruit and they, they, they just open like this, that the one that you see on the hill. It was kind of like a mystery for a long time. People would be like, well, how did that tree grow all the way up there? It's because it, over the course of like many, many years, these trees are slowly like climbing their way up. The shoot that comes out of the nut acts kind of like an umbilical cord. It'll continue to provide nutrients to the new tree for the first two years of its life. Once the nut is hollowed out, the shell is light enough to perhaps tumble into the ocean and maybe confuse people in distant lands. So here is a young plant growing. And what's cool about this one is you can actually see the coco de mer at the bottom there. It's actually germinating out of that coco de mer. This one, though, it's not too far. So th they said that the uh, the shoots can go like three to six feet. This one is going straight up. Thinking of growing coco de mer in your own backyard? Well, think again. These trees are incredibly difficult to grow for a number of reasons. For one, it can take as long as 50 years for a nut to form into a fruiting tree. 
If that doesn't deter you, well, the Coco de Mer is also Dioecious, meaning that there needs to be both a male and a female tree for fruit to form. It takes between 11 and 45 years to determine the sex of a tree, so you would have to grow several trees in order to increase the odds of getting both sexes, and even then, after decades, you might only still get male trees. Despite the difficulty that goes into growing a Coco de Mer tree, they do exist outside of the Seychelles, though be it very, very rare. This is the, uh, the catkin for the male flowers, and these little spots here are where the flowers come out, so this is like the inflorescence. It's got these like crazy little vibrant flowers. And the stalk looks like purple in color, so it's like really like a shocking kind of appearance to it. The female flowers look like small cabbages and are pollinated by... well, that, that's also kind of a mystery. One possibility is that they are pollinated by the wind, but their pollination also may have something to do with little green geckos that are often seen scrambling around the trees. You see that little bit of green? That is a lizard. He's walking all over those flowers. So the appearance of this thing, if you haven't figured it out, is like the female form. It has the name buttock fruit. That's what they call it in France, I believe. And it also has the name lady fruit. And sometimes it'll actually get a little tuft of hair here as well, which just creates uh, even greater illusion. That's the female uh, tree produces the female looking fruit, and the male produces this very, very phallic looking uh, inflorescence here. There's a mythology here that the male trees late at night will actually bend and mate with the female fruits. And people say that if you come late at night and you walk through the forest, you can see it. But if you see that happen, you'll be cursed, probably die. The young catkins, when they're younger, will actually kind of stick upright. So it's like a little bit more obscene. And then as it gets older, they slowly start drooping. Just like humans. <laughs> Once pollinated, the female trees form the notoriously shaped two-lobed fruit. This one is probably at least like 25 pounds. This is very, very heavy. And it's... uh. You can kind of feel it jiggling a little bit, actually, when you shake it. I don't know if that's my imagination, but it feels like it's a little bit liquidy in there, which is kind of amazing. You can see the where it attaches right there. It's very, very fibrous, like, husk to it. So this piece here is, like, how it would attach to the tree, like this. And they grow in clusters. I would be surprised if that thing would not fall off if it had a full cluster of fruit on it. But, like, look at this tree. You can see, like, how many fruits it has. It's got at least, what, like, ten on it? So one tree can produce quite a lot at any given time. That's pretty impressive. There's quite a lot of variety between the buttocks fruit. So like, this is, like, a very, like, full round one. We've got kind of, like, the uh, Marilyn Monroe kind of figure. This is more of like an average figure. The one over here, this one I feel like looks like, I don't know, like a middle-aged man. <laughs> Some of them, as you can see, have a little bit of a uh, tuft to it, which is in the appropriate place. The trees can also produce a fruit with a single, triple, or quadruple lobe as well. Although, those are much more rare. So you see right there on the left-hand side, that is a three-lobed Coco de Mer. So there is a single-lobed Coco de Mer up there. The Seychelles receive incredibly strong winds, which would seem pretty precarious for such a tall tree carrying so many heavy nuts. A gust of wind could go through and knock immature nuts off before they're fully grown, or even knock an entire tree down. 
Well, evolution has an answer to this problem as well. The Coco de Mer trunk attaches to the earth with a bowl-like structure. Hundreds of tiny roots connect to this bowl, allowing it to act kind of like a ball and socket joint. With this kind of attachment, the tree can actually bend with the wind, allowing it to resist damage. And if you believe the rumors, it would also help the male and female tree to get it on. Here's the dead husk of a Coco de Mer tree. Roots on it are pretty cool looking. So if you ever wondered what a dead Coco de Mer looks like on the inside, now's your lucky day. The answer is brown. What's brown on the inside? Hello, so there's going to be five parts in this very special episode on the Coco de Mer. So be sure to click subscribe if you're not already and click that little bell. That way you are notified when the next part is out. There's also going to be a whole bunch of extra features over on my Patreon page. More information about that in the description below. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.